In this video, we're going to try a few examples where we practice factoring using greatest common factors. So here, just a quick reminder what a GCF is. Is this the largest term that divides evenly into all the terms in your polynomial? So here, uh, I think we do have a GCF. There is something that we can uh, pull out of all three of these terms here. And the way I look at these is I actually consider the coefficients and then I consider any variables that we have. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with the coefficients. The GCF of 21 and 9 and 15 would be 3, because this is 3 times 7, 9 is 3 times 3, and 15 is 3 times 5. So 3 is the greatest common factor between those three coefficients. And then I also have some common factors that are x's. So we have x to the 7th, x to the 5th, and x to the 4th. So all three do have at least an x, but how many do I have available as the greatest common factor? Well, for that, you can basically look at the smallest exponent that you have available, because once those are gone, once you've pulled those out or factored those out, that term in particular would have no more to give you. So we could factor an x to the fourth out of all three. And so three x to the fourth would be the GCF for all three of these terms. Then if you have three terms in your original polynomial, you're still gonna have three terms in your factored polynomial once the GCF has been pulled out. Um, what you have to do though is figure out what the new terms are gonna be. And to do that, you have to think about what would you need so that if you distributed the three x to the fourth to those terms, you would get the original polynomial back. So let's look at the first term. Three times what would give you 21? Well, that's 3 times 7. x to the 4th times what would give us x to the 7th? That would be x to the 3rd times x to the 4th would give you x to the 7th. And then if we factor out a 3x to the 4th, this would stay a minus. 3 times what would give you 9? 3 times 3. x to the 4th times what would give you x to the 5th? That's just x to the 1st. And then last term, 3 times what would give you plus 15? We'd have plus 5. And then x to the 4th times what would give you x to the 4th? Well, just x to the 4th times 1. But there's no real need to write a times 1 because we would just have 5 times 1, which of course is just 5. So we've done it. We've factored this polynomial using the greatest common factor of these three terms here. Let's wrap up this video with one last example. This one has two variables, but that's okay, no, no big deal. Um, here, I'm gonna look for the GCF of 8x squared y to the fifth, 12x to the seventh y to the third, and 24x to the fourth y to the second. Uh, just like the last time, I'll start with the coefficients. The GCF of eight and 12 and 24 would be four. Then I have an x squared, an x to the seventh, and an x to the fourth. So since they all three have an x, there's at least an x that's part of the GCF. Now, how many do I have available though? Well, here I've got x squared available. Here's x to the seventh, and here's x to the fourth. We're always gonna choose the variable with the lowest exponent, x to the second, because once those have been factored out, this term in particular doesn't have any more x's available, so I only have two available for the GCF. We'll do the same thing for the y's. y to the fifth in the first term, y to the third, and y to the second. So they all three have a y, so there's at least a y in my GCF. But how many y's? Well, here I've got five y's, three y's, and two y's. Again, I'll choose the one with the smallest exponent. So I'll factor out a y to the second. And then once that's factored out, then we have to think about what's remaining inside the polynomial after we factor the GCF out. If there were one, two, three terms in your original polynomial, there's still gonna be one, two, three terms. They'll just be a little different because we factored some terms out. So what would be left? Well, let's look at the first term. Four times what would give you eight? Four times two x to the second times what would give you x to the second? Well, just one, x to the second times one. If you pull out a y squared, y to the second times what would give you y to the fifth? 
Well, that would be y to the third. Then we move on to the next term. 4 times what would give you negative 12? Well, we need a negative 3, or in our case, minus 3. x to the second times what would give you x to the seventh? That would be x to the fifth. And then y to the second times what would give you y to the third? Well, that's just y to the first. Last, last term, 4 times what would give you 24? That would be 4 times 6 x to the second times what would give you x to the fourth that would be x to the second and then lastly y to the second times what would give you y to the second that's just times one and I don't really need to write a times one so again we've done it we factored this really large polynomial by pulling out the GCF of these three terms here